Good morning all. Here's a Marquip bus power supply and the complaint is, is that uh, drive enable outputs from the J3 connector are not working. Now this is the LED that indicates that the high voltage bus is turned on, the contactors pulled in, and here is the input to drive enable 3 and here's the output of drive enable 3. Now I've got a switch to turn the drive enable on and off and here I have an LED and a 2k ohm resistor to indicate that the drive enable output is turned on. This switch right here pulls in the DC contactor that applies the high voltage uh, to the output. So let's turn on the control. There's 5 volts from this power supply to power up the optocoupler inputs. And here on terminals 5 and 6 on the front of the drive you apply 120 volts AC to those two terminals and that powers up the control. And the cooling fan is spun up. The cooling fan here cools the heat sinks of the control power supplies. Let's apply 380 volts AC 3 phase to terminals 1, 2, and 3. Now the 1, 2, and 3 terminals are up here beside the uh, control power supply. That's the line in, L1, L2, and L3. Let's close the DC contactor. And we should have, I don't know if you all can see that, I'm going to measure that DC bus. Let's see if the light is that better? Can you all see that? And we have 525 volts DC. That's the high voltage for the drives. And we have a drive enable. I've got an LED right here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. We'll get closer. But I'm going to turn the drive enable input on with this switch. And the drive enable output just turned on. Let's get closer to that drive enable output LED. You can see that LED turn on. All right, I'm going to turn on the drive enable input. There's the output on. I've turned the drive enable input off and the output enable turned on. The drive 3 enable input and the drive 3 enable output are working. We have to go test the other two, drive 1 and drive 2 enable inputs and outputs. Give me a little bit to move the LEDs and the switches and we'll test those other two inputs and outputs. Turn the high voltage DC bus off. There it goes. Turn the power off. Okay, everybody's powered down. Let's move this switch enable input on drive three. We'll move it to drive one. Okay, now 
now we'll move drive 3 output enable to drive 1 output enable. Power everybody back up. Let's enable the DC bus contactor. We'll enable drive one input and drive one output. Enable output turned on. That's working. Hello all! <laughs> I'm on the wrong side of the camera. I'm left-handed and I'm on the right side of the camera. Hey, <laughs> <Ain't> right? <laughs> Over here is the Marquip bus power supply that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But I wanted to, uh, let me get over on the right side of the camera. There we go. <laughs> I'm left-handed. I wanted to alleviate some of y'all's fears and uh, before we talk about this uh, this drawings I got back here I always like to draw out and explain things that I've been working on you know we got this uh, this uh, virus running around and I saw all right It'll wipe some of us off the face of the earth, and maybe me too. <laughs> maybe. We'll see. But uh, I wanted to tell you all that things like this has been going on for years. And uh, we've had wars. We've had bad wars. Where the whole entire face of the earth was involved in a couple of those 
and uh, you can't uh, you can't never come back from those times. You know, I ain't got no good thing to say about this thing that we're in right now. And I want to say that I wish we could bring them folks back from the dead, them good folks, and for no reason against their own. They kicked the bucket. We don't live forever, and that's okay. It's probably a good thing we don't live forever because <laughs> if we live forever, you'd have to see my ass out there <laughs> every goddamn day. <laughs> I ain't got nothing good to say, except we're going to talk about this Marquit bus power supply. I hear the birds out there on the beard feeder. Did you all hear that? There's a house finch. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Let's look real quick. I'm going to move the camera. We're going to watch that house finch. Stay right there, okay? We're going to be real careful. We're not going to scare it off. Let's go. Dear, did I scare it off? No, it's still there. It's still there. It's on the other side. I can see its tail. If it'll come around to this side, we'll see it. You see its tail? <laughs> I can see its tail feathers down about midway on the right side. Come on now. Come on around this side. I know you can. You want to show off. <laughs> Don't go flying off now. Did it fly off? No, it's still there. I still see a tail feather. <laughs> We're going to watch this until it comes around to this side. Look at that. I don't want to move the camera. We're going to have to watch from this side. I don't want to... Oh! Look at that. There's a cardinal down there too. I'm going to back up. Oh, it just flew off. <laughs> okay, we'll watch the house finch. <laughs> He's hiding on the other side, but y'all, y'all got to see that. Look at those tail feathers. <laughs> okay, okay, we're gonna be here all day. I gotta, 
I got to cut back to the Marquip bus power supply. No, people. No, we want a bird watch. <laughs> okay, the Marquip bus power supply is just going to have to wait. <laughs> camera just a hair over sorry about the earthquake oh there we go there we go look at that we're in the center now you can see the tail feathers it's hiding out on the other side right there what a beautiful bird now the first time I had seen a house fence I had no idea what it was it because of the the brown tail feathers and wing feathers and then its head and breast were red and I, I almost thought it was a cardinal I couldn't believe it but then I looked at it again I thought it's not a cardinal I've seen thousands of cardinals and I couldn't figure out and I had to go to the bird book I got a bird book that uh, explains uh, what they look like they fly it and and uh, what they look like and when they're just sitting around and that's it that's the bird I saw <laughs> I saw a picture of the house fence in the bird book I got in it and I said that's got to be it wonderful I'm so sorry that This bird gets to eat a little bit better than most of us. But maybe that's the way it's got to be. Maybe again. Maybe again that is right. Maybe the birds already eat better than us. The creatures in the backyard. They got to go through a winter without warmth. And then finally, in the springtime here, they get to eat well. Look here. <laughs> there. there he is. He's come around to this side. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. That is such a beautiful bird. And have we all come undone off the face of this earth? So be it. The birds will live. <laughs> the squirrels. My winter squirrel friend will live. I put the bird feed and the nuts and the, and whatnot on the ground for the birds and the squirrels because some birds, you'll notice, some birds don't like to get up there on the bird feeders. And many birds, I got a couple of bird feeders, you see the tree line up there? I got a couple of bird feeders up there because they're scared to come down here and uh, get close to us two-legged critters <laughs> so I put some bird feeders up there on the tree line too no problem with that well there we go with uh, Peepaw's ramblings
ignore everything I said because there ain't nothing of it right. Uh, but uh, let's go over here and look at the Barquip bus power supply. We have three drive enable inputs and we're going to look at three drive enable outputs and how to hook up to those and test them. Let's go! Alright, now what do we got here? We have, this is the uh, J1 connector and uh, here on pin 1 we apply an external 5 volts DC. That 5 volts DC is applied to a common 330 ohm resistor to pin 1 of the anode side of a TLP-127 optocoupler. Now the pin 2, the cathode side, we bring that back to 0 volts DC on pin 8, which is also applied to that external 5 volt DC power supply. So to enable this optocoupler input, we pull pin 2 to ground of that external DC power supply through a switch. And here we do the same with drive 2. We can turn on drive 2's input optocoupler. I don't have it drawn in. There was no need because you draw it one time and all of the other circuitry is the same. So here we pull pin 2, uh, drive 2, I'm sorry, on pin 3 to that external 5 volt DC power supply. And that turns on the drive 2 output enable. So drive 1 input enable turns on drive one output enable. When we turn drive two input enable, drive two output enable turns on, and the same with drive three input enable turns on drive three output enable. And we saw that when I turn these inputs on, the LED, the green LED on the output enable connector would turn on. Drive 5 through 6 were not used. Now the enable input for the power supply energized the DC bus contactor. We heard it go ka-chunk. And the yellow LED, I had a yellow LED on pin 7 through a resistor, a 220 ohm resistor, going back up to 5 volts. So we, when I enabled that power supply enable input on pin 6, that yellow LED from pin 7 was turned on when this output optocoupler turned on. Nice! <laughs> now let's go look real quick at the outputs. Might have to adjust the, uh, the camera here. Yes, I will. Hold on a sec. Let me get moved up. Now here are the outputs. This is drive 1, drive 2, and drive 3 enable outputs that go and enable that drive to turn on. I'm only showing the drive 1 output. The drive 2 and drive 3 outputs are the same. 
Now the drive two outputs would be on one. Here we we got the drive one outputs on one, two, and three. The drive two outputs would be on four, five, and six. The drive three outputs would be on seven, eight, and nine. Is that right? Did I get that right? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I got that right. <laughs> Now, I really do not understand why they put an optocoupler here. Because we're not really isolating ourselves from the logic side to the output side. And we're not even doing any level shifting. I thought maybe, well, this could be 5 volts and this could be 15 volts. But no, we're not even doing that because the CD40... 49 hex inverter IC is at the same potential as 15 volts DC. So what we have here to turn on that LED I had the uh, anode of the green LED connected to pin 1. I had the cathode of the LED through a 2 kilo ohm resistor connected to pin 2. And we saw that in the video. So when this 4049, we have a high here and we have a low here, that turns on that TLP127 optocoupler LED input. Through, we got 15 volts DC, through a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor connected to the anode and going to ground through this 4049. And when that happens, photons are emitted into the base of this phototransistor inside that TLP127. And now we have plus 15 volts DC at pin 4 connected to pin 3 so current flows from 4 to 3 into the anode of that green LED out the cathode through the 2 kilo ohm resistor and back to logic ground that logic ground is the same logic ground that this 4049 sits at. So, what's the deal with the optocoupler? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They just do it in there, I guess. <laughs> it could have just, like, applied the output of the 4049 right into pin 1 of J2. Oh, shoot fire. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, there you go. <laughs> There you go. This is a little bit of added complexity to the circuit, maybe. We're not isolating anything because we're the same. Here on this side of the optocoupler is 15. Here on that side of the optocoupler is the same 15 volts DC. Why waste your money putting that in there if you're not going to opto-isolate anything? <laughs> go figure that out. I don't know. <laughs> well, there you go folks there you go we got to do a little bit of uh, bird watching and a little bit of electronic troubleshooting oh hey I gotta say one more thing I didn't find anything wrong they complained about the uh, the uh Drive output enables not turning on, but I turned them on. I turned them all on, and doesn't that aggravate you? Because now, now you got to figure out what's wrong. Well, there ain't nothing wrong. <laughs> oh, hellfire! It never ends. <laughs> okay, folks. Thank you very much for being there and listening to the ramblings of an old man. And uh, I really 
I really, you know, this this stuff right here, I said, okay. But I really enjoyed the fact that you got to see a little bit of bird watching. That's most important. And uh, we come and we go. We live and we die. And it really doesn't matter. Just for the fact that the birds, if they could live forever, that would be the best. The birds and the squirrels and the deer. That would be the best. All right, all. Enjoy your time on this side of the dirt. Enjoy the time with your family. We'll see you next time.